Hi guys, welcome back. More ISS Vanguard. We're in the ship phase after our second mission to Matchstick. So uh, we have some pretty pretty hurt crew members, but we're gonna get them patched up. Uh, I've got everything set up. Um, we went through the docking process. Uh, I've assembled my available crew members. Uh, right now we're in the debriefing stage. Um, we do not, we did not get our rank up because we did not have seven discarded section cards. So unfortunately, now we'll go back in the rank up cards and we will not be ranking up anybody. I, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I should focus more on it, but I don't know. Either way, uh, we have a ton of success tokens, a ton, 14 success tokens. Uh, we're at seven dice right now, so we need seven success tokens to purchase another dice. And I actually considered selling some dice, uh, like some of the, the like basic success type dice, but we've got the conversion symbols on the player cards, so I don't know if I'm ready to sell those off yet. I don't know if it's a good thing to do or a bad thing to do. So <clears throat> in the meantime, uh, what, what we're going to do is I've, I've landed on, uh, for science, we're going to purchase a shield, uh, and I'm, I'm mainly sticking to... Since everybody's rank one, we can't get into these rank two slots yet. So I, I just purchased dice uh, that that any rank one person could use. And then uh, once we get some rank two people, maybe we'll we'll purchase some more. So, uh, but science got a shield, recon I purchased a wrench, blue die, security I purchased a blue computer die, and last but not least, uh, for engineering I got a green xenology die. So. Not sure if, if I'm doing this right or not. Um, I'm just kind of winging it at this point, but that's that's what we're going with. Uh, so that's seven success tokens. Purchased. Then, uh, unfortunately, we only have seven success tokens, so we can't purchase an additional die. So these are gonna just go back, back in the bag for for next time around. And as long as we get one success token, we'll be able to buy another dice, which that'll be that'll be great. Uh, so that's debriefing. Uh, unloading, we don't have any unique discoveries. I don't know where the unique discoveries are for for Matchstick. I don't know if, if maybe disassembling that machine uh, that the builders had would give those to us. I'm not sure, but uh, it kind of, it's frustrating when I don't get that 100% completion, um, but I, I don't know if we're gonna to return to Matchstick because we basically explored everything really. I and mean, we could go back there and farm some uh, some resources because it's really resource heavy, but I don't, I don't know if we wanna spend the time to do that. So uh, we're gonna do unloading our other discoveries now. So we've got uh, all these. I don't think I'm gonna do, these are planetary exploration. And then this one, when unloaded, I can discard it and gain two energy, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. So those are just gonna go uh, two strange flora and an alien tech discovery. And then this last one, uh, this telepathic toroid, 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 when unloaded, move research project R11 telepathy into the awaiting envelope. If present, then remove the discovery from the game. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna remove this discovery from the game and then I'm gonna put the live, uh, the uh, research project telepathy into the awaiting envelope. <clears throat> okay, now to medbay. So Amir and Betty are healed up now, so they can rem they can move back to our ready crew. And unfortunately, Gong is has two wounds, so he's gonna have uh, moderate injuries. And then Jop is, has three injuries. So I, he goes into critical, I believe. So let's, uh, let's see, put him in this one. Let's see what we have to do with a critical injury. It says, perform a survival check after placing crew member here. So it says, make survival checks. Each crew member in a critical injury slot must make a survival check by rolling three injury dice. If you roll, okay, so three injury die. So if we roll this and this, or two of these, the crew member dies. Remove their card from the rank sleeve, place the rank sleeve back in the section compartment and place the crew member back on their crew board. Oh my gosh. A survival check may, roll may be modified by medbay upgrades. Yeah, so a specialized 
expansion of the med bay. When performing the survival check, you may re-roll one, uh, one of these rolls. So let's, let's roll and see what happens here. Oh no. Okay. Oh no. So we have one of these and one of these. So that would kill Jop. Uh, and then we have an extra. It says you may re-roll one, one result. So if I re-roll this, I get another one anyways. Jop just died. Like Jop died. Just, just now. I. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's nothing else we can do. Yeah, there's nothing. We can only re-roll one die. That sucks because Jop has the, the um, he's the, our, one of our only two rank two people and he's got his individual objective that he is not gonna accomplish now. Oh my gosh, so let's see. He uh, <clears throat> removed their, their card from the rank sleeve Place the rank sleeve back in the section compartment and place the crew member back on the crew board. Oh my gosh. Uh, <clears throat> well, that was not expected. Oh no. Uh, okay, well, I guess we go to the memorial wall now, which we're gonna actually do something with. Place each dead crew member, ones on crew boards that are unsleeved, into the lowest numbered empty slot for the crew member's section. If there are no more slots available, place the crew member into the first available non-section specific slot on page 38. Okay, the crew board should be empty at this point. Place them back in the box. Wow. <clears throat> so we get recon. Remember you, Jop. Let's see, Jop was a great cook. Often complacent when it came to stealing leftovers from the canteen and preparing dinners with lab equipment. Yeah, I mean, he was a good cook. That's that's all we have to say, I guess. Poor job. Ugh, he was with us from the beginning. Recon may promote one rank one crew member or rank two member or draw two random re recruits and place one of them into the rank one sleeve. I think, so this is when, this is when we, when we slot this card. So we can promote a rank one member. I think we're gonna, let's promote Smarth. All right, and just a reminder of this, this is the Personnel Files expansion. It's basically a narrative expansion uh, that, that gives more depth to the backstory of all the characters. So it's kind of cool. Um, but let's, let's read his uh, Personnel File again real quick, just to remind us who he is. Smarth has always seen a little bit deeper than most, often to his detriment, sequences, patterns, Reoccurring numbers, hidden symbols, concealed meanings. It all makes sense to Samarth, and he made quite a few enemies weaponizing his perceptive mind in gambling and gaming. Now he uses these uncanny skills aboard Vanguard, deciphering alien runes and making sense of the nonsensical. Cool. <clears throat> so uh, the introduction is uh, file 73, or yeah, 73, so let's read that. Personal logs, Samarth Ramprakash, Ramprakash? Rakash, sure. New sets of data flow into my mind, interlocking like pieces of a 3D puzzle, but something is missing. I lack the crucial information that will let me get insight into the elusive truth, a truth I could use to protect Vanguard from the dangers of deep space. I've included many variables and long strings of data in my calculations, but still, it's not enough to solve this unsolvable equation. I ask questions that may that many people find absurd. I read reports, I analyze photos and video footage from expeditions, not enough. I must focus on exploring planets and gathering clues. Maybe then, and then it says go to log uh, file 192, which I think is just the explanation. Yeah, okay, cool. So Samarth's individual objective at the end of any player's turn, if there is a total of two or fewer lead tokens, in the lead bag, go to uh, completion. Oh, okay. We have to go through. I think there's 20 lead tokens in the lead bag, so we have to we have to go through 18 leads before we can uh, accomplish Smart's task. Holy cow! That's insane. 
Well, okay. Uh, so Smarth ranks up um, because of Jop's death. Uh, he has to step up and fill the hole in Jop's place. <sighs> okay, well, that's it. Uh, so now we uh, go back uh, so we've got a couple of cards. We've got a bridge upgrade card, reinforced hole. The Vanguard may now fly to dangerous systems or destinations. Yellow outbound options. Improved structural integrity of the ISS Vanguard will allow us to enter the, even the most dangerous systems. Awesome. That's great. Uh, also, we upgrade our tech level, where we go from tech level 2 to tech level 3. So that's fantastic. Okay, so now we're going to generate our command and energy pool. So we get three command tokens from this. Uh, we get five, six energy. Yeah, two, three, four, five, six energy. So that's great. Gobs of energy. <clears throat> uh, none of these others matter. We just remember if we're traveling to another system, we can reduce the energy by one. Uh, we have way more than three success tokens. Now situations. Food shortage. <sighs> Effect. Lower morale and move this card to the awaiting envelope or lose two energy and move this card to the awaiting envelope. I don't want to lower morale. I really don't want to lower morale. Um, I think that we're going to lose two energy. We've got four. I think that could get us to another system. Ooh. What does our morale, lowering our morale mean? Oh, it's just low morale. Okay. Very low morale. So basically, medium morale is fine. Low morale is fine. And then very low morale is we add another situation. So uh, let's... Uh, <clears throat> I think we're gonna have to travel quite a bit. I'm, I'm wondering if we should lower morale. Let's let's look at the planetary book real quick. Okay, we're in Uh We've we've completely explored uh, Matchstick. I would I kind of want to go back to uh, Burning Nefelheim, which would be two energy. So let's just map it out. So that would be two. Then we need to go. Where are we gonna go? Okay, so it looks like, from what I can tell, if we're trying to get end up in Kepler, we're going to have to travel to GYF4, and then GYF4 we can then travel to um, MP212. I don't know if this is cheating, and then we can get to Kepler, if we want to. But I'm also wondering if we, if we should go to Iota Pegasus. Because that's another Staley location, I believe. Wish I still had that objective that kind of showed me, but um, I, I'm just wondering because, like, we could go here and we could farm a ton of Steelies, but I'm wondering if we should we should pick up some more Steelies on the along the way. So if we went to TOI two, that's one energy, and then eighty one INF, that's one energy. And then we can go to Iota Pegasus, which would be two energies. So we would use all of our energy to get there. We could make a stop in 81 INF and look at Brimstone again, but we've kind of we've kind of gotten through Brimstone, haven't we? Have we gotten the Steely from Brimstone? I don't think so. So we got one from Pellucid, and then we got one from Matchstick. I think that's the two that we've gotten. All right, I don't think we've gotten um, the the steely and brimstone i'm not sure where it is but maybe we should go back and look i know we've been there a couple times already but maybe it's worth a a third look just to get that steely uh so yeah i think that's what we're going to do so our, we're going to go toi2 and then 81 inf okay so then we have then we have energy left right because then we're going to go to brimstone right so that's going to be two uh, two energy to do burning Nefelheim, so yeah, I think we're gonna be okay. So we're all the way back here to food shortage again, so we're just gonna spend two energy and we're gonna put this back in the waiting envelope. Then we have to 
reveal new situations, we get two new situations. Uh, so let's slot this back in because we're not going to change the morale. Oh, did I did I raise morale? Oh no, I think that I might have thought that we were at the highest morale level. Oh no, I think there are some things that said like raise your morale and I could have gotten plus one command token with that morale raise. I'm gonna go back through my videos and if there's a, set, a part that says raise morale, I'm gonna go back and do that because that'll give us an extra command token, which will be baller. Uh, but situations, we get two of them because of that. Great, these look good. Oh, here's here's one, win solved, raise morale. Okay, uh, intersectional games. We have a chance to turn all the misunderstanding and tension between sections into a friendly competition. Oh, okay, so basically, if we don't do anything, we just shuffle this back into possible situations. If we do solve it, we can raise morale. Cool, okay, so that goes here. And then outbreak. Several crew members succumb to a strange disease that doesn't seem to pose a serious threat to their life, despite a fever and their sudden problem with eyesight. Okay, effect each section moves one available crew member to resting crew and move this card to the awaiting envelope. Okay, it says when solved, you may assign two crew members to gain one commit or success token and remove this card from the game. Otherwise, shuffle this card into possible situations. So we'd have to assign two crew members to resolve this. All right, well, we're definitely going to be doing situations this time around because we have a lot of them and we need to resolve them. One we can't resolve, uh, but that's okay. Um, planet uh, planetary scanner, we've uh, removed that card. All right, star map. All right, we are currently in NU4 City. Um, we have four energy left. So we need one to go to TOI2 and one to go to 81 INF, and then we can land. So we've got two uh, uh, energy left, so let's burn those two energy and do burning Nephilim, because remember last time we needed the, uh, the upgraded hole to be able to, to look into this, so now we get two, so let's do that. Do you have bridge upgrade reinforced hole? Yes, we do. ISS Vanguard bridge audio log one, two, two, eight, zero, C. Bridge audio log one, two, two, eight, zero, C. It barely moves. Come on, my cute robot buddy. Do you see that? Those strange patterns under the ice. It's all hazy. Where? Dark straight lines to the left. They're too regular. It resembles symbols from the Dyson sphere. Ooh. Maybe. No, don't give up yet. Damn, the shields are malfunctioning. Over 800 kelvins, extremely high gravity. What did you expect? Anyway, we've gathered a ton of data for science to chew through. Look at how its lenses melt. So sad. <laughs> Aw. We made it further, at least. Science section analyzed the data and discovered that the symbols are indeed related to the builders. Also, they thought about how to upgrade shields for working in extreme conditions. Ooh, cool. Move card E37 from unavailable equipment to the armory and gain one success token. Cool. So now we've got eight success tokens. That's great. Uh, so we get energy shield. During a dice check, you may place this card in the roll pool of any crew member in your sector, including yourself. Add the strength plus shield or red die to this roll pool. After the dice check, return this card to the armory. Cool. Awesome. That's great. That's it. Awesome. That was worth a couple energy, I think. Uh, so now we're going to spend one energy to go to TOI2 and then one energy to go to 81 INF. We are back in 81 INF. All right, and with no energy left, we are going to land in Brimstone. 
and we've already scanned this planet completely. So I'm, I'm gonna pull pull the land the landing card out later, and then we'll we'll go from there. So actually, I'll do it now. Uh, brimstone. Okay, brimstone, and yeah, we've we've fully opened this one up, and I I don't know. It doesn't explicitly say we have to rescan it. But I'm I'm gonna say that we we've unlocked it we've scanned it before so we know what to expect so uh, shields are advised we need a pickaxe and compass uh, we have wandering weather threats uh, and then uh, DNA and xenology is advised on that on Brimstone okay should facilities next so we have three command tokens left. Um, I think we're going to do production, research, and situation. I think that's going to be our best bet. So let's go to situation first. Okay, we can solve one automatically. Uh, so we cannot resolve the food shortage situation. So this is just going to go back and be waiting. There's nothing we can do about it. These two, though, uh, we can either do strength or compass or DNA or xenology. So we need compass and pickaxe for this and Xenology and DNA as well. <clears throat> hmm. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna, this is when we solve automatically, right? Um, so, or yeah, we can once uh, solve, solve one automatically without paying the, the cost here. So uh, when solved, you may assign two crew members to gain one success token and remove this card from the game. Otherwise, shuffle this card into possible situations. Um, should we go ahead and assign two crew members to this? Maybe Natalia and Theo. Yeah, I'm kind of shooting from the hip here because my research projects I haven't looked at. So maybe um, let's look at our research projects real quick and then decide. I think that's fair. You know what? We don't have any. I don't feel like figuring it out right now. So I think, yeah, we're gonna assign Nicholas Green and we're gonna solve resolve this one. So he goes into resting crew, raise morale in the bridge card holder, shuffle this card back into possible situations. So we're gonna raise morale. Now, I don't have to look through my videos. <laughs> and also we get an extra command token now because of high morale. So that's fantastic. Then for the outbreak, uh, so I don't know, should we, should we gain a success token and, and two crew members and remove it from the game? But it's not, it's not horrible, right? It's not one of those unsolvables. So maybe, maybe we'll just shuffle it back into possible situations. Then, then we don't have to worry about looking at our research projects and stuff like that. We can just, uh, just move on. I think that's the best thing to do. Maybe we'll do it next time. Okay. Uh, back to the shipbook. So our research project grants production projects. Uh, so let's do research projects first. All right, so first we're supposed to install research projects, but I'm gonna keep these out for now because we're just gonna be, we're gonna be picking based off these cards and doing a bunch of other stuff. We're gonna be resolving one of these, so I left it out. So we have two live specimen leads, so we can solve that one. A mineral discovery and an alien tech lead. We don't have a mineral discovery. So it looks like we're not gonna be able to resolve this one either because we need two mineral and two alien tech. So it looks like what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna slot this one in. We have a lot of DNAs all over. Uh, we've got wrenches and pickaxes. Don't have a lot of strength icons. Compass and shield. Don't have a lot of computer and DNA. We don't have any computer. Wrench and xenology. I think we've got one of those. Hmm. Let's let's do compass and shield. So we'll put that in there. Then this one, we're gonna spend those, and then we gain uh, telepathy, which is one we just got. A strange. Uh, toroid creature we found seems to move and communicate using telepathy and telekinesis. Okay, so we get, it turns out there was nothing supernatural about the creature. It used various exotic fields to manipulate matter. However, one of these fields appears to 
interact with the human brain. Move the following card from unavailable equipment to armory. E48, automated, automated mental inhibitor. Ooh, that's cool. If you gain the wounded, panicked, or exhausted injury, you may return this card to the armory instead of gaining that injury. Ooh, that's super powerful. Awesome. Wow, that's really good. Uh, okay, and then this card gets removed from the game. All right, and then uh, the rest of our our uh, discoveries, we can't use anything on because we need at the minimum two mineral discoveries to, to solve any of those. So unfortunately, we can't do anything else. So those goes back into gathered. Then we're gonna go back to the bridge. Oh, not back to the bridge. Back to ship facilities, and then we're gonna do production complex for our last command token. All right, so these guys go forward in the queue. So they're resolved. This guy goes forward in the queue. <clears throat> okay, we don't have any new production projects and we need require tech level four and tech level three, which I believe we are now tech level three. We are tech level three, so we can slot this one in now to stage two. So it goes here. Then we can assign people to bump these. Okay, we can repeat it any number of times actually. So shield and DNA, do we have shield? DNA. We have one shield, and then here's a DNA. We've got a couple DNAs. Maybe we should do Betty, or we can double DNA this one, boop boop, and get it all the way out. But we need DNA for Brimstone. For Brimstone, we could do Xenology, because we're only sending two people in, and maybe Pickaxe because pickaxe I think was pretty strong. So that would give, so that would be our crew, Vakujlo and Christos, we, if we send those out to Brimstone. So yeah, let's let's use Avery. And this one's gonna go here. Then let's use Betty to move it off. Cause it says you can do that any number of times. So I'm assuming you can do it with a production project and just complete it. Great. That's fantastic. We don't have any more, oh, science and shield. Oh, shoot, I was, I was looking at the wrong thing. Uh, then yeah, let's, let's use uh, Theo and Narciss to push this up one. I was, I was thinking DNA, why was I, I was saying DNA, but I was, I don't know what I was thinking. But yeah, let's do that. There's those. And we don't have any more shields, so we can't bump it more, but next production round, it'll, it'll be completed. So that'll be great. <clears throat> All right, now we resolve all of these production com uh, projects. So let's do section suits. After several ground missions, each section submitted its own idea for a specialized suit. We can manufacture them all at once using as many standard parts as possible. There are four new suit types required extensive specialized training, but they do bolster our away team even further. So we can, we've got to move these from any little equipment. All right, so we get uh, 24, 25, 27, and 30. So we get a sensor suit. You may only carry one suit. Whenever you gain a lead during a dice check, gain one additional lead of the same type. Awesome. Heavy suit. You may only carry one suit. Ignore all wounded and critically wounded injury effects. Oh my gosh, that is baller. Uh, hazmat suit. You may only carry one suit. Blue or two other dice. Reroll a danger die in your roll okay or a still suit oh, at first i thought that was a big hump or something it's a cape you may only carry one suit whenever you exert refresh one die more okay cool and that heavy suit is awesome and the sensor suit is great so that that was worth it that'll be more additions to our available equipment Lander facilities. Now we begin to develop larger landers. We could also create a line of modular facilities to fit in them. These new facilities fit aboard all of our landers and provide a way team with new exciting capabilities. All right, we get uh, AL4, which is expanded storage, so we can get plus one equipment. It's a utility mod. We get a lander mod med bots. 
crew members in sectors connected to the landing sector or in the landing sector discard one injury die each. Oh, cool. So yeah, we move it back to the waiting envelope and then we can, we can heal up basically. That's cool. And then evac shuttle, uh, place one crew member in the landing sector. This crew member flips one injury card. Okay. So it's an evac shuttle. It can come and pick us up and take us back to the, back to the shuttle. That might be really handy. Uh, okay, uh, so that's those. Then planet side outpost. For a while now, the away team has requested some form of shelter they could raise during their ex exploration of alien worlds, but producing one that's light and small enough to fit in the lander bay, yet easy enough to assemble, won't be easy. Well, we just completed it. Uh, we devised two types of planetary constructions that can be built by a single crew member and a universal tool kit to go with them. Okay, so we get uh, three pieces of equipment, scout craft, a multi-tool, and an outpass. Scout craft, use two green dice, move twice to connected sectors, ignoring the path icons. Cool, this counts as an action. If you enter a sector with a log, do not make a second move, okay. Multi-tool, during a dice check, you may place this card in a roll pool any crew member in your sector we get a wrench and a computer or a blue die so that's cool outpost a blue and a red place the outpost token in your sector this counts as an action whenever you rest or exert in a sector with this token refresh two more die Ooh, that that's nice cool so that's even more equipment then we get this lander mod crew quarters uh, crew members and sectors connected to the landing sector or in the landing sector refresh all of their dice. Okay, so that's another like bump. Uh, and then we get uh, production project uh, outpost improvements. Our away team provided an extensive list of upgrades that would significantly increase the cap capabilities of our planet side outpost. Cool. Uh, we require tech level four, so it doesn't matter, but it goes in the awaiting envelope anyways. That gets removed. Awesome. We are killing it with production and research projects. Um, great. So now we go to the hangar. I wish we could build more of the, uh, or more landers, but uh, we can re-slot in all of our utilities. Um, and then Brimstone, I believe we needed like four shields for landing in Brimstone. So maybe we should take the Space Ranger again because we can bump bump our shields. We can do the shield structural mod. Then we've got some utility mods. Let's let's uh let's slot all the utility mods in one section. Boy, lots of utility mods. Utility, utility, this is structural. Okay, so we can't do any more structural mods. We can do utility mods. I think we might use the emergency broadcast system. Seems kind of old school. We're not using any of our brand new lander mods, but I think this is the best for this because we need four armor, I believe, to get through that atmosphere. Uh, without losing supplies or anything. And then we can gain two more supplies, which puts us at eight. That gives us a little extra room. I think, I think that's gonna be our best bet. So we're gonna use the Space Ranger. All right, great, sounds good. We are going to be returning to Brimstone for a third time. I'm sorry about that, uh, but I think we need to find that Steely. And it gives us uh, a place to land to regather our energy anyways, before we move on to uh, Kepler. Uh, so that's going to be our next episode. That's it for this episode. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate you guys watching. I'm having a blast. Uh, see you guys next time.